In this video, I want to continue our derivation of the prior predicted distribution when we have a binomial likelihood and a beta prior. And at the last video, we'd got to this point whereby we had this value for the, or this integral here for the prior predictive distribution. So x here, remember, is in the case of disease, the number of individuals in our sample who actually have the disease. So we've got this form here where we had this relatively complicated sort of first part of our expression here involving gamma functions, and then we had an integral over theta. And if we look at this second part here, it looks quite similar actually to a beta function, except it's a beta function with now a new parameter a, which I'm gonna call a prime, which is equal to x plus a, and a new parameter which I'm going to call b prime, which you can see up here is just going to be n plus b minus x. It looks like that in terms of the theta part of it, but it doesn't have any of the first part of it, because remember that for a simple gamma distribution of with parameters a and b, then we have this sort of part of our first expression before that. So we have gamma of a plus b divided through by gamma of a times gamma of b. So we don't have that, but what we can actually do is we can sort of multiply this expression through by this, and so long as we divide through it afterwards, then we haven't done anything to our expression over Hall, so equality holds, but we can get something which looks like a beta distribution in that case. So then what we do is we keep the first part, so we've got gamma of m plus 1 times gamma of a plus b, divided through by gamma of x plus 1 times gamma of n minus x plus 1, times gamma of a times gamma of b. And I'm going to leave a bit of a space for when we're going to actually divide through by this sort of expression which we're going to multiply through by. So I'm leaving a bit of space and then we've got our integral from 0 to 1. And now what we need is we need gamma on the top here of a prime plus b prime, which is just a plus b plus n because the x's are going to cancel when you add a prime plus b prime. And then on the denominator here we have gamma of just a prime, which is just x plus a, times gamma of b prime, which is n plus b minus x, times theta to the power x plus a minus 1, times 1 minus theta to the power n plus b minus x minus 1 d theta. And because we've multiplied through by this expression here, we need to divide through by that. And that's just equivalent to multiplying through by 1 over that, so that's just the same as multiplying through by gamma of x plus a times gamma of now n plus b minus x, if you can still make out what I'm writing, divided through by gamma here of a plus b plus n. Then, okay, so now it becomes apparent why we've actually created this beta function here. Because a beta function is actually, or beta distribution rather I should say, is a valid probability distribution. And it's a valid probability distribution over the range of theta from 0 to 1. And hence, if I integrate this probability distribution from 0 to 1 over all range of theta, this whole thing has to equal 1. So that simplifies our expression enormously because now we don't have the integral part of it. So then what we're just left with is that before the integral sign, so we've got gamma of m plus 1 times gamma of a plus b times gamma of x plus a times gamma of n plus b minus x, divided through by, on the denominator, gamma of x plus 1, gamma of n minus x plus 1, times gamma of a, times gamma of b, times, finally, gamma of a plus b plus n. And this is now what is known as a beta binomial distribution. And notice that all theta dependence is gone, we're just left with the only variable as being x, which is what we require. We're looking for the marginal probability in terms of x. Okay, so let's now think about the case when a equals b and equals 1. In other words, we have a uniform prior, which is what happens when we put a and b equal to 1 into our beta prior density. So let's look at what the prior predicted distribution looks like in this circumstance, because we can simplify this a lot. So here in the numerator here, a plus b here in this sort of first part here just becomes gamma of 2. And we know that gamma of 2 is just the same as 1 factorial, which is just 1. So that just disappears. We know also that gamma of x plus a is now gamma of x plus 1. 
because a is 1, which cancels with this term on the denominator here. In this next term on the numerator, we've got gamma of n plus, now it's not just b, it's gamma of n plus 1 minus x, which is just the same as that on the denominator, so it cancels again. Finally, if we look at the denominator here, we've got gamma of a times gamma of b, and a and b are both 1 here, so we've got that gamma of 1 we know is defined to be 0 factorial, and we know that 0 factorial is defined to be 1. So in both of these cases, they just disappear because they're both 1, and our prior predictor distribution simplifies to just gamma of m plus 1, divided through by gamma, well, this expression on the bottom here, this gamma of a plus b plus n is just gamma of n plus 2. And we know that since both of these things are integers, we can just replace uh, gamma of n plus 1 by n factorial, divided through by n plus 1 factorial. And of course, this is just equal to 1 over n plus 1 because of the fact that n plus 1 factorial is just equal to, if I sort of write it out, n plus 1 times n factorial. So the sort of n factorials cancel and I'm just left with 1 over n plus 1, which makes sense because essentially if we're thinking about the case of where we have 10 individuals being drawn from our population, we want to essentially give uniform probabilities to any number of those individuals having the disease, starting off when uh, we have the case of 0 all the way through to 10. So we actually need 11 sort of values for our probability distribution all of which are equal. So our PMF here is just flat, which is just what we saw before when we had A and B being equal to 1.